Hi, this is Michael Brown, Spirit Daily, and here we are again for a short little commentary. Today, Eclipse Day, what's going on in the U.S. As I speak, the discord among people, the demonstrations, the incredible vitriol and animosity, the total lack of civility, the taking down of historic monuments in the wake of Charlottesville. It's interesting, Confederate statues, for they harken back to what seems nearly to be germinating now. Great division, in a way, even as one journalist put it, a, quote, cold civil war, unquote. And so here I sit, Eclipse Day, if it darkens behind me, it's because while I speak from Florida, it should be peaking in about 10 minutes. I'm not going to comment on Confederate statues themselves. Robert E. Lee said he didn't want a monument because it would be divisive. Robert E. Lee himself resurrecting that war and he didn't want that. On the other hand, these monuments are a part of our history, the history of the United States. United in quotes. But let's go beyond that. They are also removing or defacing statues of the first Supreme Court Justice due to his support for the Dred Scott decision, which was racist, and also a saint, yes, Saint Sarah in California, supposedly because of his treatment of Native Americans, something that I think has been exaggerated or misrepresented altogether. If you hear rumbles behind me also, as this eclipse approaches, we do have thunder in the area, and even a crow cause. Anyway, this removing of statues brings us to precarious territory because many already mention doing the same with Christopher Columbus. They argue that he also oppressed and hurt Native Americans, as did other early Spanish explorers, Catholic explorers. This is really distorting history. Yes, there were times of abuse on both sides. Wrongful Spanish violence against Indians and wrongful Indian violence against the Europeans. But overall, it was no great slaughter or oppression, to be sure. In fact, the King of Spain gave explicit directives not to harm the Indians. The mission of these Spanish explorers was to convert Indians and especially, many and many don't realize this fact, to declare La Florida, North America, for the Pope, for the Vatican, for Jesus and Mary. Did you know that Columbus was a third order Franciscan? Did you know he was thinking of becoming a priest, entering a seminary, nearly did? That he was especially dedicated to a Marian shrine in Spain, northwest of Madrid, where the Virgin had appeared a couple centuries before, even carrying with him across the Atlantic a reproduction of a statue there. A statue, by the way, that had been 
given to the Pope of Seville, Spain, by Pope Gregory the Great in the 5th or 6th century. A statue that Pope Gregory had used in a procession around Rome at the end of the Roman Empire to end a chastisement. And so it's interesting, is this the real reason for antagonism, antagonism against Columbus? An urge on the part of certain secular humanist types to eradicate not only the Christian, but the Catholic roots of this nation? If you know that those Spanish fleets, the Soto, Ponce de Leon, Menendez, always had priests aboard, missionaries. In some cases, as many as 30, as they set out on their missions of conversion, of introducing Christ. Paintings of the Blessed Mother, huge paintings emblazoned, graced the back of ships. And in Florida, Timuquan, Indians developed a special devotion to her, to Mary. Yet now they try to erase this history. You don't see it in textbooks. 16,000 missionaries were eventually sent to what began as a Catholic nation. One of the explorers, as this eclipse continues to darken behind me, one of the explorers I mentioned, Admiral Pedro Menendez, brought 12 Franciscans and four Jesuits on a treacherous journey to finally establish a permanent settlement in Florida, in the United States, what became the United States, in the New World, to establish the real, the first real city here in, that, in 1565. It's a long time ago, and he and his ships, some of which were lost, battled through hurricane zones. Noted one priest aboard with Menendez, Father Lopez, on August 27, 1565, scanning the horizon for any indication of the new land. A marvel in the sky factored into all this. It came at nine that evening when a comet suddenly blazed through the darkness directly above the ship. According to Father Lopez himself, everyone was astounded for it gave so much light that it might have been taken for the sun. It went, it went towards the west, that is, toward Florida, and its brightness lasted long enough to repeat two credos. God, he wrote, quote, showed to us a miracle from heaven, unquote. The next morning they finally spotted Florida, which means pastoral flowers. When Father Lopez set foot on what is now St. Augustine, the first thing he did was fashion a wood cross and plant it in the sand there, claiming the new world for Christ. Now keep in mind, this is 55 years before Plymouth Rock and 42 years before Jamestown. The first permanent settlement in the United States was thus established by Catholics. By Catholics. In fact, Admiral Menendez himself was so devout, he waited until September 8th to himself disembark, to, to land, to walk upon Florida, choosing to do so on that day, because it was the Virgin Mary's official 
birthday. It was a mass of thanksgiving. Again, decades before the pilgrims. Today, the tallest cross in the world stands where Father Lopez planted the original wooden cross, where he celebrated mass, where he declared America Christian. The year this new cross, as tallest in the world, was erected, 1965, another great comet was spotted. How many forget or don't know this? How many forget or, or don't know that the Europeans originally named the Mississippi River the River of the Immaculate Conception and the Chesapeake, the Bay of St. Mary? Lake George in upstate New York was the Lake of the Blessed Sacrament. And in Canada, Montreal was the village of Mary. And what about other signs? What about the image of Guadalupe? The year that occurred, the year of Haley's Comet. And a strange and, and the strange fire that Columbus spotted while, while desperately searching the horizon for land. And now as I speak today, if it gets a bit dark here, as I said behind me, it's because of the clouds, because of the somewhat distant thunder, and the darkened sun. Civil war. More and more are using that term. The division is extraordinary. We no longer even share the same means of communication, the same media, the same news, the same facts, the same truth. Where is truth now? How do you find it? But in the Bible, but during Mass, morally, psychologically, spiritually, particularly because of abortion and homosexual issues. And of course, politically, as not in our lifetimes, we're at, quote, war. Does an eclipse or a comet have anything to do with it? Eclipses, eclipses are natural, cyclical occurrences. But God can certainly use whatever he wants. It slashes right through the heart of this nation, having begun it, Oregon, locus of euthanasia and abortion, traveling over our wavering heartland, including St. Louis, the Mississippi, the river of the Immaculate Conception, and exiting at Charleston, South Carolina, not too far north from where I sit, where the first volleys were fired at Fort Sumter in, yes, the Civil War. Oh, how we have forgotten, how we have strayed. Will we get back? Will we even acknowledge these roots of our nation? Will we finally come to our senses Will we one day get back to the cross that stands at St. Augustine? Or will the current trend to remove history remove this as well, along with the grace of unity that went with it? Was it the great American eclipse this week or the eclipse of America? This is Michael Brown, as I said, or is detailed in my book, Where the Cross Stands. God bless you, and thank you for listening.